Welcome to Revitalize and Replant with Mark Clifton, where we equip pastors to take their churches from declining to thriving by pointing them to a new future and a new hope. Join us weekly for encouragement and practical advice in your pastoring journey. We're back with another episode of Revitalize and Replant with Mark Clifton. And I'm excited about this because this is actually a follow-up to our, our last episode uh, where we're talking about worship in the context of revitalization. Now, you know, we tend to, I don't know how you define worship, but and everybody defines it differently, but there is a worship that seems to lend itself to revitalization and the approach that we take in our churches, small churches, broken churches, growing churches, churches that are that are having some conflict. Worship changes in every one of those churches, doesn't it? Well, it does. And I'm Mark, and across from us is Mark Halleck from the uh, Calvary Church in Inglewood. And we're here live in person at the New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. So glad to have you all with us today. Worship is at the heart of church revitalization. It is not making changes for the purpose of trying to make changes. It's to get your people, to get the people of God, to love Jesus more, Mm -hmm. to be able to follow his plan for their church, and they will follow him to the degree that they love him. That's right. Rather than they love the church as they know it. And you get them to love him more through worshiping him. Amen. Authentic worship, not necessarily what we call worship on Sunday morning. Now, before we move on, ladies and gentlemen, last episode, we brought up a song called uh, Touch Not the Glory by my friend Ron Owens. And Ron and Patricia wrote this amazing song, and and, uh, they have a book called uh, Return to Worship. Yep. And Acoma Press has it out, so you can go to Acoma Press. We'll put a link to it. Yep. You need to read this book. I remember there's a place in this book, Dan, where uh, Ron talks about uh, he has a dream, and in this dream, uh, he's at a Christmas pageant, and the place is filled with people, and they have this angel on a wire up there, and the angel's going to come down from the back of the church down to the front. What could possibly go wrong? Right. Well, he said, it, and when the, when the angel comes down from the back of the church to the front, the whole congregation, oh, oh how wonderful, and he said, and the whole time in my dream, there were angels watching over the congregation as they do every time they oh, gather. Wow. Yeah. And the angels were thinking, why are they impressed with that? Oh, my. Wow. <laughs> Wasn't that amazing? Yeah, 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 when yeah, the yeah. glory of God wow. is here? Yeah. Why are, that's the kind of Amen. book it is. Amen. Get it. Read it. it. You'll love, love it. it. So anyway, this is the one of the lines from his song, Touch Not the I'm Glory. So, by the way, I, I'm so glad you forgot your recorder today. That's true. I was gonna, last so week, much. I was going to play the recorder <laughs> yeah. with it. And he forgot uh, it. Actually, Thank I had goodness. to get the reed changed on, oh. it, on my recorder. <laughs> no, uh, no, because we're talking about the glory of God is everything in, in worship. Yeah. And... I mean, it's not about glorifying your numbers, glorifying you, your ability. That won't change anybody's heart. But listen to this line. He says, um, has God appointed you to some great and noble cause or put you near the sound of men's applause? Touch not the glory. Touch not the glory. Touch not the glory, for it belongs to God. There's an amazing song there. And it is so hard for us to refrain from that. Yeah. The praise of men is something we've craved from the time we were little toddlers, That's right. and it doesn't go away, And uh, but we have to be understanding. Amen. And so that, that it's all about God's glory. Yeah. And so when we care more about God's glory than what people think about us or anything else, and we communicate that to our people, then our people care more about God's glory than the structure of the church, yeah. the organization of the church, the preferences. Yeah. So how do we get them to care more about God's glory? And number one... Corporate worship is the primary way, ladies and gentlemen, to draw people's hearts to God because that's when most of them are in one room at one time together. (laughs) Right, Mark? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in corporate worship, I mean, what's happening there? We're gathering together as a community to to sing praises to the Lord, to celebrate the ordinances of, of the Lord's Supper and and, and uh, baptism, to hear the preaching of the word, to joyfully give of our tithes and our offerings. And we're doing that together. We're doing that together. You know, one of the things that uh, we think we talk about at our church of why is corporate worship so important? Because here's what we know, even since COVID, uh, you know, a lot of people have gotten addicted to watching uh, worship on TV, right? Yep, yep, yep. And so why we have to, as shepherds, have to fight for, hey, there's nothing like being with the body. And part of the reason is because when we sing praises to the Lord, there's going to be weeks where you come in and you're discouraged and you're in the pit. 
of despair. And you know what? You don't feel like singing, but you know what? Your brothers and sisters are ready to sing for you in a sense, right? And so that you hear these truths of the gospel over and over, and there's going to be weeks where your brothers and sisters are discouraged and you need to sing and worship the Lord and bring them hope as you recite these words in this, this theology as well. Point being, corporate worship, we're together worshiping Jesus. And we need one another for encouragement, to build one another up, to remind one another of the truths of the gospel uh, when we're believing lies about God's love for us, who we are in Christ, and all of these things. And so corporate worship, you know, my question is this. Do your people understand that that's why they're gathering. You know, Don Whitney at Southern Seminary said that he believes corporate worship is as important or more important than individual worship. Mm. And individual worship is obviously right terribly necessary. Sure. But in individual worship, you decide what you're going to pray about. You decide what scripture you're going to read. You decide kind mm. of how long it's going to last. But here's what corporate worship does for us. So you ready? It forces us or causes us to, number one, lay down our preferences. Yes. And number two, agree to be led in corporate mm. worship, not to lead. Wow. And wow. and that's a humbling place, and it's a good place to be. That's right. And there have been times, you know, I've been in worship services all of my life. Some have been well done, some not so well done. <laughs> and there have been times, many times, I must say, that if I sense this isn't really a well done worship service, I get a little, I can get a little haughty about it. And say, well, you know, I'm just going to kind of check out here. But I'm being led in worship. And I need to submit my heart right. to that, and I need to be in that moment, right? Yep. And say, "Put your." This isn't about you, Clifton. It isn't That's about it. how you would do it. I'm here with God's people. Whoever is up there seeking to direct us and lead us yep. in worship, I need to put my full heart and mo- it's good discipline on my Amen. part that's not right. to always just have it the way I want. No, that's it. right. And every week, it's like we are declaring together. At least should be right. The, the Lord, this is your church. Right. Not this my is church. Not my church. Absolutely. This is your church. Right. And how grateful I am just to be part of your church. And along with that goes that fact that, and you already alluded to this to a degree, and that is that our responsibility as church members is to minister to each other. And the Bible tells us that Amen. we are That's to encourage right. and minister to each yes. other in worship. And when yes. you talk about singing, my friend Joe Kreider, I think, said, you know, your reason you, one of the reasons you sing in worship is that there may be somebody in front of you who found out that their spouse has a, mm-hmm. a terminal disease that week. That's right. You may have someone next to you who found out that their child uh, has, is reprobate and is missing and they don't know where he is. And to hear you sing yeah. is an encouragement to them. That's right. That's and right. and don't don't lose sight of that. So corporate worship. Now, with that understood, and it helps us lay down our preferences, it helps us be led, it puts us in a group, right? And by the way, I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but you know, sometimes the way our worship centers are set up where they're basically all dark and the headlights and so I should say the spotlights and all the lighting is only on the stage. Yeah tends to make us not look at one another or feel like we're in a group right. that we're at a performance. Boy, that's so true. And I don't particularly think that's good. No. I don't. I don't. I walk in, and if I can't see people around me, and if I'm, my focus is, I like going to a church where I where there's light. Amen. And I can yep. see people, yep. and we can see one another. I realize you can't control the environment yeah. for video and all that stuff, but but again, we need to know we're there together. We're not there to watch something. That's exactly right. We're there right. to be part of something. It's not a performance. Something. And right. that's why, and I, I would say, I think uh, uh, Mark Dever, Nine Marks, this is one of the great things they've reminded us of, is the congregation leads. Yes. Yes. Not some dude up front okay, who, well, I, who's, who's, who's well, okay. We're, we're, we're going to get there. Okay, we'll Number get there. one, okay. I want to say this. Structure in worship matters. Yes. Structure matters. And why does structure <laughs> matter? Well, number one, if you've got unchurched or, or new people coming to your worship service, if you've got a structured worship service written out, they immediately feel more comfortable about the church service because they know what's happening. They know they know what's coming next. And otherwise, they're sitting there going, well, "I don't, you know, people around here know what's happening next, but I don't know what's happening next." So it, it lowers their anxiety a little bit, but it also tells your members this is a structure. This is not just haphazard, yeah. and we're not we're not taking the Holy Spirit out of it. Right. Don't give me that. But yeah. we're saying these are things that matter to us, yeah. and these are why we're doing them. Yes. And in your structured worship, you should have structured prayer time, yeah. a prayer for our heart to hear the gospel, a prayer of confession. You should have structured scripture read. You should have some planning and thought into this. Yeah. I think that's really important. And, well, and it, it says we're going somewhere. It does. It says we're going from that's this right. point and yeah, getting yeah, yeah. to this point. Yep. And it begins with, Mark Halleck, a call to worship. Mm. So what we do at Little Linwood, I shouldn't say Little Linwood. 
Linwood. But what we do at our, our small, our normative size church in Linwood, usually Howie, our pastor, will get up there and he'll give the housekeeping. Right? You got to say, "Hey, we're welcome sure, you here yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. Glad yep. you're here. We have uh, we have uh, Wednesday night. We're going to have this Bible study, and the youth are doing this on Thursday night. And don't forget about our community event coming up on Friday. And thank you for being here. And then he sits down for a full minute of silence. Mm. This is a little country church, right? Yeah. I'm not yeah. talking a high church place here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he sits down for a full minute of silence. And at first, it was a little awkward, but now people understand yes. this is a moment for us to catch our breath. That's right. To clear our hearts and minds because what we're about to do now is different. Yeah. And then normally, what happens is a pastor or a layman, someone will get up there, and the very first thing that we hear on Sunday morning in worship is what we're dis- how, what we are to respond to in worship, which is God's word. Mm. We don't respond to a music leader who gets up there and says, "Hey, how y'all doing? Glad yeah. you're with yeah, me today." Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. may say that, you know, yeah. God's not gonna. It, yeah. It's okay, but when you're doing that, you're inviting them to respond to you, right? And they may not be doing well that morning. It yeah. may be the worst morning they've ever had. They may have gotten some terrible news yesterday. Yeah. But if you stand up there and the first thing they hear is God's word, now I'm responding to God's word, right? I'm not responding to a person. Yeah. And in our church, what we've done, we've gone so far as we don't have any musicians, so we can't have live music. So we use recorded music with words on the screen. But I have a, a young man who gets up every Sunday morning and he stands down on the floor. He doesn't stand up on the platform with a microphone. And before we sing, he will read a scripture that goes with that song and he'll explain how we're responding to God's word as we sing this song. Mm-hmm. So the congregation is leading the worship, yes. not an yes. individual. Yeah, that's right. That's so right. structured worship with, with that. Can I say one thing about I want that you to too? Keep I, talking. I just think, because I think what you're saying is so important. And, you know, I went on sabbatical a few years ago and was blessed to visit a number of different churches, right? So as a pastor, you never get to go worship in right. other places. And it was a joy to do that. But one of the things that I noticed in, in many of our Southern Baptist churches is especially depending on the age there there must have been a time period where the worship leader is almost like an MC. It's oh, it's kind of painful. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And kind of cracking. How's everybody? You know, you sing better when you smile. You know, and uh, and it's like my kids are looking at me like, Dad, what is happening right now? You know what I'm saying? And and there's just this reminder that the honestly, and this is at our church. We don't want our worship leaders talking, Uh, quite frankly. They're either reading the word or they're praying. And there's a cheese factor with that that's just painful, let's be honest. And and sadly, I think a lot of folks don't realize that. But but what it also says is, listen, I'm not here to hear you in in your cracks. Like We're here to hear the word and to worship the king. And so the best worship leaders are actually worship leaders that are easily forgotten. Mm -hmm. They're worship leaders that are not trying to put themselves in the front uh, of people. And uh, that was one of the things that we experienced. It was just a reminder. Um, And I would say this for you all who are revitalizing churches. That might be something that has been part of the history a long time. It might take a while to change it. Yep. And you may need to lovingly begin talking about that. But, um, But again, I think this emphasis on the glory of God, the focus of God, us becoming less so that he can become more um, will help create an environment where hopefully in time that kind of worship and leading is is uh, not a mark of what you're trying to do. And get a copy of, of Ron Bo- Ron's book, Return to Worship. Read it. Let your folks read it. Go through it together. Help them refocus on worship is. And what you're wanting to do in worship and revitalization, listen to me. You're not wanting to do anything weird and strange. You're not That's wanting right. to bring That's in all right. kinds no. of smoke machines no. and loud music. You're wanting to get spend more time praying and reading scripture. Yes, that's it. That's and I it. don't think you'll have a hard time convincing them to do that. That's hopefully. Right. Although, Listen, if you're trying to put on a Branson show for Jesus, then uh, you've immediately <laughs> <yeah>. forgotten <laughs> what you're there for. And and that really starts with where, like you said, where are they? Yeah. You know, where are they in their relationship with the Lord? And let them define. Well, that. and Dan, honestly, and that may mean you know, there's times you've got to have career courageous conversations, right. you know, and at the Branson show for Jesus, that's actually the best description I've heard because that's what it felt like. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and just realizing, listen, I love you, but, but, uh, we, we want to make sure Jesus is the hero of this yeah. and not any, any person. I was at a church one time where the music leader, he said, now, before we conclude our song service today, we're going to do something you've never done before. We're going to sing a hymn backwards. So get ready. Oh, we're going to no. sing a hymn backwards. <laughs> and he mentioned that between every song. And we got to the hymn, and we sang it, the five verse, then the four verse, then the three verse, then the two verse. And he said, Jeez. see, oh, we geez. sang a hymn backwards. Cheese ball, man. It's yeah. the worst. And I thought, man, that took me right to the throne of glory right there. <laughs> the I'll never forget is, that I moment. know there's so much to say on this, but the weight, 
People need weight in worship. We need to bring weight back. This isn't a stand-up comedy routine. This mm-hmm. is the weight of the glory of God. Well, that brings us to this next point, and that is the focus is for prayer and scripture reading. Because that sets the foundation, yes. does it not? Yes. That's even, in my opinion, I'm not saying it's more important than the music, but structurally, it sets the groundwork for what the music is going to be If like. you spend more time making announcements than prayer, you got a problem oh in my. your church. Oh By the way, my. don't make announcements that often. People don't listen to that many anyway. Keep As them a, simple. Simple. Two or we three. Say, we say three max. Yeah, 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 yeah. And do you and do that before the service starts or I, in I the service? The way we do it, so we have an opening song. Now in Colorado, I mean, people are coming in 20 minutes late. It, or your best people. It's just how it is. So so we do an opening song, a joyful song. People are coming in. Then we do announcements. Yeah. And then very similar to what Clifton said, we kind of move in then to a time of more focused. Okay, we're here now. Right. And let's get focused and right. let's move forward. Right. So, um, right. So, man, you got to be careful about announcements. And then they don't need to be silly. They don't need to be funny. You don't need and, – and, again, if you spend more time in announcements than prayer, you got a problem. And you know how many times I go to a Southern Baptist church, and the only scripture I hear is before the sermon. Mm-hmm. I go, what in the world? Yeah. Why, why don't we read public scripture together? I, we had a, a church replant, and the new church came in, and they were very much a part of this, reading scripture. And so they were reading two and three scriptures, and one of the older members texted me – or emailed me, rather – and she said, do most churches read this much scripture on Sunday morning? I think it's a bit much. I mean, that's exactly – because they, she'd never done well, that don't, before. Let, let me ask you this, because you guys, you guys are older than me. You're yes, old, we are. You're old Southern Baptist. Yes. Is that a traditionally – I mean, like – because, again, in my generation, that's not strange, right? But so I'm running a Baptist that say things like, this feels – Anglican, or this feels yes, Presbyterian. We, we did not Do you know to, what I mean? Yeah, we did not. We did have, you know, I've done something at this church I'm revitalizing, or I shouldn't say revitalizing, I'm sorry, church where I'm serving in a revitalizing component at Spring Valley. I've done something recently. I've had him pull up the hymnal and in the back of the hymnal do responsive readings. Yeah, and but do, I, it, do it as a responsive as opposed to irresponsive. That's true. Don't be yeah. irresponsive reading. <laughs> so we used to do responsive readings. Yeah, okay. But we, but you're right. We were so afraid of being liturgical and right. all that kind of stuff yeah. and high church, yes. right, and all of that. And and so, but, but what we've done is we've gotten away from reading Scripture on Sunday morning. And one of the cool things about reading Scripture, besides the fact that, I don't know, it's Scripture and it never goes out and comes back void, is that it gives you an opportunity to raise up a generation of particularly men who can maybe end up preaching or teaching mm-hmm. by giving them a chance to stand oh. before the congregation and read Scripture on yeah. Sunday morning. Yeah. And then maybe even a little bit of description of what this means or why we're looking yeah. at this yeah. today. Yeah. So we have we have a focused Old Testament reading and a focused New Testament That's reading. Like then we that. have a focused prayer uh, for our hearts to hear the gospel and a prayer of confession and also a prayer of rejoicing of our redemption. So we have like I three of that. those prayers. And then we read Scripture and we preach. But – also, and of course, Blackaby says this all the time, and so does Joe Kreider. If you folks move around during the prayer time, uh-huh. stop it, uh-huh. quit it. Hmm. Don't I don't you know? You, a lot of times I'll be in a church and they'll be praying, and I look up and the worship team has appeared on the stage, or they'll be praying and the worship team has disappeared off the stage, like it's Star Trek or something. It's like you can stand there while the man or the woman is praying yeah. to the holy yeah. God yep. Yep. <laughs> of the universe. You, you don't need to be moving while that's happening because when you're moving, you're basically saying prayer is nothing more than a transition moment. Mm. And as pastor, you need to be engaged in that prayer too. Mm. Don't you be heading up to the platform good, so you man. can be there that's as so soon good. as the music director's done praying. You you all stand still and you engage in that yeah. prayer. Don't use it as a transition. By the way, one of the things that I've learned is that in 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 my worship structure is – let let there be dead space between yes. those two oh, events. Right. Yes. That right. says that what's coming up is important. Yes. You know? So, and another thing about responsive readings, one of the things that I found really, really works well is if you've got the right people that can do this, have a little bit of music under that responsive reading. Yeah, that's reading. true. That's yeah. true. That's Don't do it all the time. Right. No, well, it's one of the things that's, that's so, word. I got to say this, like, and again, if there's listeners that are doing this, I'm, that's great. I mean, this is, these are secondary matters. Right. But the whole idea of a bumper video in worship <laughs> right so like it's like you can't have any space so we gotta have a cool bumper yeah, video yeah, right and th- that's exactly what you're saying yeah. man i'm like let, man get rid of the bumper video yeah. mm-hmm. that's what you call holy spirit time right that's right there. you know let the spirit they do not need to be entertained right during bumper time i always think that are these a bunch of radio people because you can't stand dead air if right. you're a radio yeah, exactly. person you know right. it's exactly. like we gotta have somebody talking yeah. somebody doing you know something, i was you know? i was a radio guy you know in college yeah. and high school and i was pastoring a church up in real north missouri and uh, as a college student and i was doing radio you know six days a week 
And so I, I, I stayed up late one Saturday night, you know, I was a college student. And so I'm driving to church and I'm half asleep and I, cause church is like an hour away and not in the country. And I get to the church and I'm still a little foggy. And so this is true. They had a big round clock at the back of the church. I'll never forget this. So I stood up that morning and I said, well, good morning, everybody. It's 10 minutes past seven and it's 70 degrees outside. <laughs> I really did. I, I just went into the automatic. You know how you do that? Because you don't want any dead air. And I, I never, and they looked at me, and I go, which means it's a good time to make much of Jesus. Did you have a sponsor by any no, chance? No, I didn't have a sponsor. You know? oh, hey, listen. So but lastly, you want to involve your congregation in worship. So here's Amen. one. If you do yep. have a new song, and maybe we'll, we'll yep. talk about Don't have too many new songs. Like I said, um, the Gettys talk about maybe 50 songs in your church uh, mm. library that you use every Sunday. Rotate them around. But if you do have a newer song, here's a really good idea. Find a scripture that goes with that song and then find one of the older members and print up that scripture in really large font on a piece of paper a week or two ahead of time and say, hey, uh, Mildred, would you next Sunday morning, if we hand you a wireless mic there where you're seated or could you stand up? Would you read this scripture before we sing this song? Mm. So you have this elderly lady reading the scripture that goes with the new song we're mm. singing. The other thing you should do is from time to time, and we do this at Linwood, we put the scripture up on the screen and we ask people to read the scripture in unison. Mm-hmm. So reading scripture in that. unison, having people read the scripture before the song, and going back to, um, I go back to, to responsive readings. I really do. Mm-hmm. And I love your mm-hmm. idea of maybe having some music played back mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. But that gets them mm-hmm. engaged and mm-hmm. involved in worship. So anyway, it's been a great time being with you guys. It's great. Kyle is here. He's just he's just killed it on Candy Crush again. So uh, <laughs> that's good. He's going to take us to lunch, I think, right? So we're, wow. gonna, we're, going, we're going to lunch, actually. Really? Uh, but you all just stay right where you are because <laughs> yeah. we'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back, Lord willing. Uh, <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe, by the oh, way. Oh, subscribe, yes, and, to the uh, podcast. And, and just you know, if you have any notes or comments, you know there are places where you can leave those. We we do read those if we get any. And, uh, <laughs> We've read both of them. <laughs> Actually, we have them on the wall now. <laughs> so, thanks, you guys. See you next time. Thanks for joining us today on Revitalize and Replant. This podcast is brought to you by the North American Mission Board, where we help dying or struggling churches regain health for the glory of God and the good of their communities. If you found this conversation helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. To learn more about becoming a replanting pastor or to explore resources about revitalization for your own church, visit churchreplanters.com.